Now, I'm going to talk about how to strengthen ourselves suitable for ministry first. And I talk to Nunzia Jindia Jitia Moyo. Na pia kuwa katika uduma ama kubalika katika kuhudumu. This is also applicable when we help other people to be strengthened to be ready for ministry. Vizuri tutumie hii nchia wakati pia sisi tunasaidia wenzetu ili wapate kuhudumu katika uduma. Now the first thing we need to know for sure is the most important quality in us that makes us suitable for ministry is our relationship with God and not just knowledge is a relationship. Okay, jambo la kwanza ba kila mchungaji anataka elewe ni uhusiano wako na Mungu. Sio vile una ujuzi, lakini ule uhusiano wako na Mungu ndio muhimu sana. When I first talk about the love of God, live in the love of God. What is the importance of that? The importance is no I know that it's easy to come to God. It's easy to please God. Therefore, I have confidence and a heart of freedom instead of burden. And na posunguzia upendo wa Mungu. Ni kule kule kuwa na uhusiano mzuri na kumpenda Mungu na inakuwa rahisi Mungu kunibariki na pia kuhudumu katika njia iliyo nzuri. And also it helps us to to be able to have strength from the Lord. How to pray? Because I know that God loves me. God lo likes to hear from me, and I pray I have strength from God. Na pia inasaidia kupokea nguvu kutoka kwa Mungu. Na pia unelewa ya kwamba Mungu na kupenda na unakuwa na nguvu ya kumtumikia Mungu. I have encouraged pastors everywhere and Christians everywhere to spend more time reading the Bible, meditating the Bible, and praying to God to have strength. It's not just knowing the knowledge that God loves us, but to really live in the love of God and enjoy the love of God and strengthen by the love of God. And the Bible gives us promises of God that we hold on to this and we know that when we follow these promises of God, then we'll be blessed by God. Biblia tupatia ahadi zilizo katika Biblia ambazo tukimwamini Mungu kupitia kwa vile vipengele tunabarikiwa na tunapokea kutoka kwa Mungu. And the time to pray to God to have strength, you know, to have actually a number of benefits from it that is very important to spend time with God. Na mara inatakana mara nyingi tuwe tunakuwa na nafasi ya kujitenga na kuomba kwa Mungu. Na huo muda tunaochukua mwingi tukiwa karibu na Mungu tukilitafakari tuna ukweli ni kwamba unakuwa unabarikiwa. What is the importance of praying to God? You know, it's not just asking God, it's loving God and let God love us. What is the importance of this and what will it do to us? Ni nini umuhimu wa kuwa karibu na Mungu? Si kumuuliza maswali, lakini kule kutulia na kukaa katika uwepo wa Mungu ili Mungu apate kuwasiliana nasi na nasi tunapotoka pale tunakuwa na nchi ya rais ya kuwasiliana na wengine. So you can write this down. Hii unaweza kuandika chini. First, it will give us the qualities of God, the peace, the love to take away our burdens. Ya kwanza atatupa ile ujasiri, atatupa amani na atatupa upendo wa Mungu. And I encourage you when you pray now you can have the prayer, I know that many of you like to pray, like shouting, it's okay, but then I will encourage you to have prayer that, that we are strengthened by the love of God. Sometimes 
sometimes with prayer of shouting, sometimes it's hard to receive the love of God. Mara nyingi tunapenda kuomba katika sauti kubwa na sio rahisi kupokea kutoka kwa Mungu. Because love is tender. So we believe God is loving me now. And I'm loving God and God is very happy. We need to have it internalized it's from the hearts to get strength from the love of God. Maisha ya utele ama ya milele yanatakana yatoke katika kiundini cha nafsi yako na moyo wako kwa sababu hapo ndipo wewe unaweza kumpendeza Mungu. When we have this kind of prayer to be moved by the love of God, what will happen is it makes our heart more gentle, more loving, more caring. Eh tukiwa na huo upendo unaotoka katika kilindini cha moyo wetu na roho zetu na nafsi zetu inakuwa rahisi sana kumpendeza Mungu. And also this kind of prayer the second benefit is to help us. Now first benefit is that we can experience his nature and change by God to his nature to his love joy peace amaombi aina hiyo yanatubadilisha tunaelewa uhasili wa Mungu kwa sababu sasa utakuwa uko karibu uko ndani ya uwepo wa Mungu na utaelewa asili ya Mungu so please write it down so you can remember kwa hiyo na kusiwe unaandika ili unaweza kuwa na kumbukumbu now the reason why we to emphasize this is I have trained some people and I told them please spend more time praying. But on the car, when we have a long distance, I said please spend time to love God, to, to live in the love of God. And they very soon they'll be chatting. I haven't noticed people that really want to spend time and oh God, you're so wonderful. That from the expression I know that they are not loving God. Okay. Amejaribu kuhimiza wapendwa wengi na wachungaji wengi wapate kumpenda Mungu lakini muda mwingi wanachukua katika zile simu zao wakiongea na marafiki zao na pia utasikia mtu anasema oh Mungu ninakupenda lakini ni kwa moyo tu sio katika ndani ya kilindini cha nafsi yake roho yake na moyo wake Many Christians are used to dancing which is more physical or shouting in a prayer instead of the hearts moving to God. Vile unavyoelewa tunapenda kuimba tukitoka na jasho tukiruka lakini unapomwendea yule mpendwa ndani ya roho yake na ndani ya moyo wake na nafsi yake ukwenda kwamba ampendi Mungu. And the benefit of letting God's love come to us is first that we can receive the nature of God that we live out the love and the joy and the peace of God. Muhimu wa kumpenda Mungu tunapotulia tukiomba ni kwamba utajua sura ya Mungu. And the second benefit it will help us to take care of our hearts, our sins, our negative thinking and emotions, any garbage. Ah, jambo lingine la muhimu ni kwamba itatusaidia kukaa katika uwepo wa Bwana pasipo kuwaza kinyume pasipo kuwa na mawazo mabaya because in the process God can speak to our heart when we are more gentle in the prayer that God can speak to us in the heart and then we can receive this messages to take care of problems in our life katika ile hali ya kutulia hapo ndipo Mungu anaweza kukupatia ujumbe wakati unakuwa mtulivu na Mungu ana ili upokee ule ujumbe katika moyo wako. And the third is a loving relationship will build up a strong love with God and then God is pleased with us. Eh kitu kingine utakuwa umefanya yani uwe na upendo na ushirikiano na Mungu na Mungu atakupenda na pia Mungu atakupatia amani. Our relationship with him is not just You know, many people think of warrior prayer. It's fighting. It's a love. You know, a relationship with God is more a loving, a loving relationship. Ah, vile mna vilewa siyo tu wa umbezi ndio wako karibu na mungu. Lakini kile mungu anataka kuwa kwa ni wewe kuwa mtulivu na kupeana mawaziyako na kiliyako kumuelekea hapo mungu anafrai. And then when we have a loving relationship with God, God is pleased with us and he will bring blessings.
things to our life. Na jambo lingine la muhimu sana ikiwa tunampenda Mungu, Mungu atakupatia amani na huyu Mungu atakuwa baraka kwa maisha yetu atatubariki. And it will also bring anointing of the Holy Spirit. Na pia atawachilia upako wa Roho Mtakatifu. So that's number 4, the Hiyo anointing for ministry. Number 4. Upako wa huduma. And then number 5 Then we can hear from God more when we are more gentle in our prayer. Na pia tunapokuwa katika ile utulivu, tunaweza kusikia sauti ya Mungu tunapokuwa katika ile utulivu. That God will speak to us and we can when we are more quiet we can hear God's messages and God's ideas what to do. Mungu anaweza kutusungumzia katika ile hali ya utulivu na pia tunaweza kupokea mawazo ya Mungu katika ile hali ya utulivu. When I pray or in, even in my daily life I can receive many ideas of teaching and of how to help people and the direction of ministry. Wakati yeye ametulia nipo Roho Mtakatifu kumhudumia na kumpa vifungo eh na kili ambazo anaweza kuzitumia anapokuwa anafanya kongamano ama washa kama hizi ili watu wa Mungu wapate kubarikiwa. So you know if a person is just fighting you know warrior prayer, prayer. oh say and go away say and go away it's the the mind is too busy to receive messages from god wakati tunaomba kwa sauti sana tukitembea tukipiga kelele sasa akili yako inakuwa haiko karibu na mungu lakini iko katika vita vya kumpiga shetani na hapo tunapoteza mwelekeo wa kufahamu mungu anasema nini but when we are more gentle and quiet in god and Oh Lord, you're loving me. And I have problems, I can handle the problems in my life. Lakini tunapoomba katika hali ya utulivu. Tunapoomba katika hali ya utulivu na kumwelekea kumwambia Mungu, Mungu anakuwa raisi wa kuelezea kile kitu ama anakupa ufunuo mpya wa kueleza. That we will receive messages and ideas from God. Hapo ndipo tunapokea ujumbe na na tunapokea ujumbe na sauti ya Mungu tunapokuwa tulivu. And if we train more people in our church who want to spend time loving God and living the love of God, these people will be changed by God also. Na pia tukiweka msingi wa kufundisha waamini wetu ama washirika wetu jinsi ya kumpenda Mungu na wakuwe wengi hao watu pia wanaweza kumpendeza Mungu na wanaweza kuona upendo mwingi wa Mungu wa kumtumikia Mungu. I notice that when I spend time loving God and let God love me, I find that that I will receive compassion for the people. I will receive moving of the Holy Spirit to move me to serve him. Na wakati unapojitoa vizuri mbele za Mungu na upeane akili yako mawazo yako, Mungu anakupa ile hali ya huruma kwa wale wapendwa unaohudumia na pia unakuwa ule upendo na unapokea amani kutoka kwa Mungu. Okay, so just now first I talk about the Bible and then second I talk about prayer. Ya kwanza nimezungumzia kuhusu Biblia, na ya pili sasa nazungumzia kuhusu maombi. And the prayer is the interaction of love between you and God. Na maombi ni ile uhusiano wako na Mungu. And then number three is how we handle ourselves, how we take care of us says how we build up our spiritual life that we pay attention to do. Na pia ni vile wewe mwenyewe utakapojilinda hivyo ndivyo utakapokuwa na ile hofu ya Mungu ya Roho Mtakatifu inatakana uwe na hali ya wewe mwenyewe kujilinda. This is very important for ministry. Na hii ni muhimu sana katika huduma. You have noticed that I have talked a lot about practical things how to help people spiritually how to handle our problems in our life eh amesungumzia katika hali ya mazoezi ili tupate kuwa na hali ya kumpenda Mungu na kupenda watu wa Mungu na kuweka katika matendo all this teaching came from my daily life when i handle my own problems haya yameku haya mafundisho yote yamekuja kulingana na maisha yake ya kila siku vile anavyojipeana mbele za Mungu When I learn to handle my problems, then I 
know how to help people with their problems. Nikijua jinsi ya kujizuia kutotenda dhambi, basi hapo nitajua vile anaweza kusuluhisha shida za wenzangu. Then my message can be practical. If you have anger, how to handle it? If we have lust, how to handle it? Basi ujumbe wangu utakuwa ni wewe mwenyewe watu wakausoma kwa sababu ukutoka kilindini cha moyo wako pia roho ya ule mpendwa atashuhudia yale unayosunguzia ndivyo unavyoishi. And also how we communicate with people I observe how I communicate with people how are, are we building up people's uh, relationship and helping them na pia uhusiano wangu na na wenzangu na pia jinsi eh, eh, kuwasaidia hao wenzangu ili wapue katika neno la Mungu or are we when we talk with people we argue and then break up relationship ama tunapoongea na watu tuna tunabishana na tunafunja ile uhusiano and when we talk to our spouse or members in the church or the leaders are we struggling fighting or are we talking harmoniously tunapoongea na wake zetu ama tunapoongea na katika waamini wetu kanisani je tunaongea katika hali ya asira hali ya kuvunja ama tunaongea kwa njia gani so we we'll observe and say do i have problems i need to handle ndio kwa hivyo natakana wewe mwenyewe kwanza ujirekebishe ama ujue shida yako ni nini and then we try to find a way to resolve our problems ili tu na njia ya 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 kusuluhisha shida ambazo tunagumbanishana nazo so how we handle our own problems that we can apply to teaching vile utakavyosuluhisha shida yako hivyo ndivyo unaweza kusuluhisha shida ya mwenzako and then the next step is that in ministry we have to ask God for wisdom to you know continually pray to God to ask God for wisdom how to do better in our teaching and our ministry. Ukiwa mhuduma unahitaji kumwomba Mungu akupatie hekima na maarifa jinsi ya kufanya hii kazi katika mwelekeo wa kiungu. For instance for myself when I come to you I will ask her how can I help these pastors better? How can I help them better? How can I meet their needs? And I talk with the people around me and I will ask her so I will find ways how to do the ministry better here. Kwa mfano kwa yeye anauliza Mungu naenda kuhudumia watumishi wako. Je, nitawasunguzia nini unataka niwasunguzie nini? Na vile atakavyoelekezwa ndivyo akaanza huduma wake hapa akiwasiliana nasi na pia wewe ukishuhudi ukieleza vile unavyojisiki. And in my teaching before the teaching and when I'm doing the teaching I'm also receiving messages from God. How to teach? What do they need? Na kabla ya kuanza mafundisho, yeye Roho Mtakatifu humpatia vipengele na mawasia jinsi atakavyofundisha. And the next thing now I talk about first is reading the Bible, receiving messages from the Bible. Ya kwanza usome Biblia, upokee ujumbe kutoka kwa Biblia. And also dig in the Bible how to find out the best how can we find a good teachings from the bible na pia kuna kile hapa kusoma biblia sana ili tuone kwamba tunapataje mafundisho yaliyo mazuri kusoma sana and the next is a loving relationship with god so god can communicate to us and bless us na ya tatu ni kule kuwa na uhusiano mzuri na mungu ili mungu apate kutubariki nasi tubariki waamini and number three, we observe our own life how we handle problems and people and 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 then we improve ourselves and then we tell people how we handle this problem. Na yatatu ni kwamba wewe uwe mfano mzuri kile unachoongea ndivyo unavyoishi isiyo kwamba vile unavyoongea sivyo unavyoishi. So that our teachings are more practical, are more down to earth that people can understand and apply. Kwa hiyo inakuwa kwamba kile unachofundisha ndicho unakiweka katika matendo na unakuwa barua nzuri ambayo waamini wanapokuangalia wanakufurahia mchungaji. And then we need to you know pray to God to guide us in this number four. Pray to God to guide us and think, you know, to pray and to think. How can I do my ministry better? How can I raise up the ministry? How can I raise up the spiritual life of people better? Kwa hiyo jambo lingine ni kumuomba Mungu akupatie mwelekeo 
chinzi huduma wako unaweza kuwa na chinzi unavyoweza kuelekeza watu wa Mungu kwa mjue Mungu. And then number five, we have to evaluate ourselves. What have been doing? Am I doing well? Are the people changing? What is wrong and what is right? Pia baada ya kuhudumu kwa muda fulani unahitaji sasa urudie kufanya kurudia kuangalia yale nimekuwa nikifundisha je yamekuwa msaada kwa kanisa kuamini ama nini inaendelea So as a minister our heart should be always connected to God and also connected to our life and connected to people so that we can improve our ministry Ah kama wazima maisha yetu moyo wetu unatakana uwe kwa Mungu moyo wetu unatakana uwe kwa amini moyo wetu unatakana uwe kwa huduma ili tupate kufanya kazi nzuri hii ya Mungu But I have observed some pastors what they do you know first they have a lot of chores at home they do a lot of work but then when they have time they just chat they chat for a long time I've seen pastors chat for 2 hours 3 hours chatting for a long time is not discussing is chatting lakini na ajabu kwake yeye ameona wachungaji tunapenda gumzo sio kushiriki neno la Mungu na pia kupenda kazi zetu na tunachukua kwa muda mrefu haoni tukiwa tunajitoa uh, kusunguzia hali vile tunavyoweza kufanya kazi ya Mungu kwa njia iliyo nzuri so they are wasting their time kwa hivyo wakati mwingi tunaumaliza my time is very precious your time is very precious wakati ni wa dhamana sana na ni wa muhimu sana katika maisha yako why do i have so many of these teachings ni kwa nini tunakuwa na mafundisho kama haya because i've spent time on the bible i spent time praying to god i spent time asking god how i can serve better help the people better amekuwa na wakati mwingi akimuomba Mungu amechukua wakati mwingi akisoma Biblia na pia amechukua wakati mwingi akiuliza Mungu je naweza kusaidiaje wahudumu wenzangu ili wapate kufikia kiwango cha kukupendeza wewe Mungu I do relate people to help people anahusiana na watu jinzi ama na wachungaji jinzi ya kusaidia wengine but I don't spend long time chatting or doing something meaningless Eh hajui wakati wake mwingi kufanya yani kuwa katika simu akiongea na wenzake ama hafanyi vitu ambavyo havimfaidi Mungu. If a person doesn't spend time with God and spend time finding out how to serve better, what happens is he's just serving God in a without clear direction. Eh kwa yule mtu ambaye hamtafuti Mungu akitafuta ule upendo wa Mungu kupata mahusiano ya Mungu yeye yeah, anakuwa wako tu hata kama unahudumu sio kwamba unahudumu kimaanisha lakini unakuwa tu pale kama mti ambao uliokauka He just find a message for this week and then he can preach and then he start his work Yeye yeah, kazi yake ni kuchukua Biblia haraka na anaangalia kifungo anasoma kile kifungo na akiongea basi hiyo imekwisha hivyo But for me I spend a lot of time praying and asking God how I can help these people kwa yeye, yeye anachukua wakati mwingi akiuliza Mungu nita nitasaidiaje hao watu nitafundisha nita, nita, nita nini ili Mungu ampatie mwelekeo na hivyo ndivyo anataka wewe pia uchukue wakati wako ili upate kusaidia wengine and then number five is that we need to spend time with people to help them spiritually to build them up spiritually and to train them for ministry and to lead them to do ministry Jambo lingine ni kuchukua wakati na wenzetu ambao tunawaona hawa wapendwa wanaweza kufanya kazi nzuri ya Mungu tuchukue wakati kuwafundisha jinsi wanaweza kupenda Mungu jinsi Mungu anaweza kuwahudumia na jinsi wanavyoweza kupendeza Mungu ili huduma ukue That way we can raise up people to serve God Hivyo ndivyo tunaweza kuinua wenzetu wapate kumtumikia Mungu Okay here I just gave you five points As a pastor what we should do all the time to build up our life and our ministry. Hapo ni mapatia vipengele tano jinsi ya kuweza kusaidia wenzetu na wapate kumtumikia Mungu kwa njia ya upendo na kwa njia ya Okay this five points first think in the word of God to find out teachings and to hold to the promises of God. So the first is with the Bible. Na jambo la kwanza ni kufundisha hao wapendwa washikilie ahadi za Mungu na wapendwa wao wanasoma neno la Mungu wakikaa katika neno la Mungu. And then number two is a relationship with God. We spend, you know, 
During the day, I spend much time loving God and let God love me. And that way, God communicates to me. And number three, we examine our life how we handle sins, anger, negative thinking, and negative emotions, and people's problems. We examine it. And then we know how we handle it, and we can help other people to handle it. Jambo lingine ni wewe kujiangalia katika ule utu wa kale nini kinachokuwa kikusumbua ili unaposumbuisha ile jambo itakuwa rahisi kwenda kusaidia wengine ile nao watoke katika ile hali walio ndani. And then number four, we pray to God, ask him how I can do better, how I can expand the ministry, how I can minister to these people. Just seeking God and also thinking, seeking God and thinking how to improve the ministry. Kwa hiyo jambo lingine ni kumtafuta Mungu katika maombi, ukitafuta mashauri kutoka kwa Roho Mtakatifu na kwa Yesu Kristo kwa Mungu, ukiuliza nawezaje kufanya vizuri ili nipate kufanya kazi inayokubalika. And number five is actually helping people. Uh, evangelism, building the spiritual life, train them and lead them to serve God. Na la tano ni kusaidia wenzetu kufanya uingilisti jinsi wanaweza kuombea wengine na jinsi wanaweza kufanya kazi ya Mungu. Now there is a six point that you can put there. Six, na kidi ya sita. Six point is to learn from other people online or to observe other people. Learn from people online, you know, watch people on YouTube, see how they do ministry and also observe other pastors how they do it. Ingine ya sita ni kwamba unaweza tumia mtandao kujifundisha kutoka kwa huduma wengine vile wanavyohudumu pia pia inaweza kukusaidia. So learning from other people, kujifundisha kutoka kwa wengine, sometimes including learning from your spouse or your members. Pia unaweza kujifundisha tabia ya mke wako ama tabia ya wahuduma wengine. And learning from your coworkers too. Apia kwa watenda kazi ambao wako nao wanatokea zingine ambazo ni nzuri ambazo pia unaweza iga ukitumia huyo mtindo. Okay, so do you have any questions about this? The how to raise up ourselves to be a better minister doing ministry better and have a good better spiritual life. Yeye yeah, kuna swali jinsi ya kuinuliwa kufanya kazi ya Mungu kwa njia nzuri katika maisha ya kiroho.